Good morning, guys. Road trip. Brody, it's too early for this. Darko. Quarter to seven. Time to warm her up. Thieves up there probably snoring away, wondering what the heck is going on. He's on, on the other side, though. Yeah. Steve! <laughs> Steve, our truck driver's been staying upstairs for the last, what, month, probably? Hauling grain? I think so. Is that going in the middle? Just for me. <laughs> Unbelievable. We'll have, to, Unbelievable. we'll have to stop in Millbank and get some hardies. No. No? Sioux Falls. B-dubs? B-dubs for breakfast? Well. It'll be 10 by the time 10. we get there. Maybe on the way home. <laughs> We've peeled Duggo out of bed early. This is like spring hours. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> gotta get it stuck. It's like, gosh, I'm getting out of bed and it's dark. This is strange. Grain farmers in the winter. The tent is so dark, Brody, that I can barely see. Oh, now that's nice. Look at that. Our big LEDs. All right, it's, we're two wheel drive, so we need to be smart about how we back up here to get moving again. Look at the tint difference. I don't know if the camera shows anything. Where's the dome light? How do you run this machine? I'm not used to GM at all, so don't ask me. I'll have to wait for videoing until we're light out. Drive. <laughs> South Dakota roads are really smooth, aren't they? I'm gonna be in a full body cast by the time we get home tonight. I really expected one of these tires that you had worked on to be in the ditch by now, too. <laughs> hey, hey it's now. ridiculous back here. You guys got air rides, seats, and I'm just on a big bench bolted directly to the frame. I it's, pre it's pretty rough up here, too, so. Uh huh. We'll be switching next down. Never. <laughs> Uh, I had to let all the air out of my seat because Brody was complaining about the squeaking. <laughs> Can't even drink my coffee back Look here. Look out, we got a car. Hold out in front of you. We need to do the J brakes. Well, we're just on fumes here and we stopped at Fuel Mart <laughs> out in the west side of Sioux Falls somewhere. In the booties. And the gas station is under construction, so we only need to make it, what, how far? It says 10 minutes. 10 minutes, and the gauge is just headed to hitting red. Now Here's the after quarter, it really goes quick. It's uh, so close, it's so close. I'm sure the gas gauge is right on, yeah. That's we'll be lucky, we're price. gonna be lucky. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Uh, I'm sure you all read that. Home of Laura Ingalls Wilder. Smith. One day I spent a lifetime at that little play that Amy made me go to. Remember that? <laughs> Hot? I Hotter was, than? I advise everybody to go to it at least once. It'll uh, bring new new light to your life. Smith, South Dakota. Laura Angles Wilder Show. Okay, we I think we only have, what, a half a mile to go and we might find diesel this time. We're in the big town of Alexandria. We're still above the red. We're gonna make it. Oh, Merlin, Grandpa would be very disappointed in us. Yes, <laughs> you never leave home without a full tank. It was full. We did start out okay, but then things happened, missed a couple of exits because we were in the wrong lane, and and then, uh, well then, who would ever imagine it closed down a gas station in the middle of nowhere. Here we go, though. Does anyone see a diesel stop? Gas, gas. Gas. Flex fuel. Where's the battery gas plug diesel. in? I see one. Here, show them your gas tank. Yeah, the old gas gauge right there is just a tad above empty. Is this McDonald's? Is it McDonald's? I could go for some. I don't think so. 
looks like McDonald's. Well, maybe it is. But it says St. Clair. Go get me a McChicken. Or a double quarter McDonald's. pounder. McDonald's. We gotta get fuel in here before we start sucking air. Come on, it's cold out here. Come on. Now, if I remember right, you can't go full blast on this. Anyways, with the big farm one, I think we're fine here. Four seventy-nine. That's nice. Oh gosh, I only got like fifteen and a half gallons, and she popped off because seventy-five bucks apparently is the limit for uh, the credit card or whatever the pump. So I got a half a tank, right on half. So she must be a 30 gallon tank only. And they're inside using the restrooms. I should go visit also. Where do we go, boys? Oh. Sitting in a parking trailer. lot for yeah, a big yeah. trailer. Yeah, I think they got that trailer already loaded up for us. Just back that trailer on this trailer? Yeah. yeah. I like that. It's got a ground leveler bucket just like we have and then I think it's the stump puller that Eric wants might come home with us <laughs> <laughs> we're doing a tour of MDS and so far it's probably the quietest very quiet. why is it so quiet in here ain't anyone working I don't know I don't know uh, we'll, we'll find out when we walk down there but the building we're standing in right now is the original shop um, MDS actually started in Dimuk, South Dakota. I don't know if you guys came down, if you came down on Interstate. Yep. There's a little welding shop and it started there. And then in 76, the John Deere dealership that is over here, that's um, closed now, but they both came to town at the same time. And we've been here ever since. And as we walk further back into the plant, you'll just see kind of the stages of growth. But this is where it all started. What is the size of this little, or this first building? Uh, I believe you're about, 75 by about 120 is what it is. Okay. But everything you're seeing here, we've kind of revamped this whole front part and we purchased two Bistronic products, um, a press brake. That was our old one right there, the Acme Press. And then we plasma table, a downdraft plasma table in the back. And uh, we kind of, we ran it for about 13 years. We kind of outgrew it. And then this shiny piece of machinery just showed up. Yeah, it's the automation. We just started getting that working. Right now, it just got done loading a sheet, and then that sheet's gonna go into the machine, and the one that's in there will come out. And depending on what kind of parts going in and out of it, it can unload the parts, or we'll have to do it manually. And then that door will close, and then that other table will come up, and then they can reload that table. Wow. So how many hours a day is this cut? Right now it's cutting from about six in the morning till five. But it has the ability to load it with about 27,000 pounds of steel. And if you got a, like a common nest or something, um, it'll load those sheets, unload them, and then it'll set them underneath. And then in the morning you just come and pick parts. Wow. Well, that's pretty fancy. Very fancy. That's so it goes in as a four by eight sheet. Yep. And this is just left that's over. All the, that's all the, ske the skeletons we call them, or the remnants, and then those get loaded in a roll off and taken away for scrap. That's cool. Yeah, that's maybe about the fastest one I've seen yet. Yeah, let's that's just, fast. Let's just say it's a little faster than the plasma we had. I mean, that plasma did us good for a lot of years, uh, but. It's just time to help do some, get some better throughput in the facility, and I mean, it's just, this is a 10 kilowatt fiber laser, so. so. This is what it's making? 
Right there? I believe so, yep. It looks like bucket side shells is what it's got. Wow, so it uses every square inch of that sheet as much as it can. Yep, that, well that's the goal anyway when when they nest it. I mean, their your hope is to use 90 to 95 percent of the sheet. Some stuff, the shapes just don't allow that. You get what you can. Yep. You just put another one in. Wow. So it just cut, in that time that we've been talking it, maybe four minutes, it just cut that whole sheet out. Yeah, so there are nine bucket shelf sides on that. Wow. Now it's squaring itself up and it's starting to cut again. You need to hire more welders, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> This building was built in 2007. They cut this wall out and then we added 21 welding bays. The other half of it is part storage, so bucket shells, mounts, jigs, all that. So it either gets cut on the laser, goes to the brake, and then it goes to the shelf, and then we have a parts puller. As soon as jobs come through, they pull them and use them. And, and this is where all the welding happens. Yep. For anything. Yep. So how many welders do you have? Right now, I think there's probably 18 to 20. I'm not 100% sure what we got right staff right now. We have a couple open days. Look at that, Brody. They're hiring. You want a job? <laughs> no, no, no. I've seen it welding. Each one has its own supply of gas and air, so they're not changing models. They still weld off the spools. Some of the heavy welders that do the wheel loader buckets do uh, weld out of barrels. So you guys build just Mostly attachments for yep. right, we, any brand, basically. Anything that anything with a quick attachment since 1965. So we can either adapt or build for that specific unit. So if somebody's got a loader that's still in good shape and wants a bucket, OEM that originally made it doesn't make it. We have a we have a livestock division, and uh, we build gates for you know finishing barns, sow farms, nurseries. And that's the other division. You'll see some of that walking through here too. There, there, that's familiar. Oh yeah. So I was walking past this stack. This looks like some sort of grapple. There's packers in here, so they just pack everything together. And like that guy, he just welds all day long. And so he, they pack them together, and then like this one just packed together, and then they give it to a welder that just welds. Great beads all day long. But this is familiar. This is the MDF bucket that we have for our skid loader. I don't know who's been welding this, but that's some impressive welds. I wouldn't even wouldn't even attempt to keep up with these boys. So that's the robot. Yep. It's a two-sided robot, and uh, so some, like I was telling Doug, some of it goes in packed, and some of it goes in as piece parts, depending on how it's programmed. These go in packed, and then uh, it does all the finishing weld. It does one at a time. We unload it, reload it, and it just keeps burning. But all of our piece parts that we do over 1,500, 2,000 a year to get done, like grapple teeth, skid loader plates, pallet torque rails, all the stuff that just, it's monotonous work that would burn a guy out. That's what goes on here. So he just keeps reloading. Yep. <laughs> so we're moving out of the welder area. This is, this is paint. Yep. This is powder coating. This is paint. a powder coat system. Um, it all gets hung right here. Then it goes through an acid wash. There's a 50 foot oven behind that. Then it goes into the powder booth. Makes a loop around the back of the building. Comes through a 150 foot cooling uh, heating tunnel oven at 425 degrees, I believe. Then it comes through this cooling tunnel and it's ready to take off. Well, this is by far the biggest thing. 
preloader stuff there, right? Yep. yep. That uh, probably looks like a 114 inch JRB 500 is what it looks like. Your guys' your 644 has the big 418 mounts on it. Yep. So, but yeah, that's that's one of the products we make. We do those all the way from uh, 2 to 2.75 and 3 to 3.75. They're different profiles. They go Q, R, and then we go into an S, which is like a uh, four, four and a half, and then we have a bulk material bucket without a grapple option. That one you can get up to uh, seven and a half yards. Really? Yep. Well, I don't think our 644 would do that full of grapple. No, probably not. <laughs> you don't paint every day. That, no. that, that's just uh, when you got enough product to go. You run it. Yep. What do the employees that run that do when? They're doing maintenance on the system, and then in our other building we still have a wet line, paint line that uses electrostatic paint. That's still operational too, so they're painting cutting edges over there that we don't do in here. And 16-foot uh, wheel loader pushers get pushed, painted over there. Okay. So they're either maintaining this or painting over in the other building. Interesting. Everyone, everyone stays busy is what you're saying. Yep. Yeah. There's no idle time. I mean, this stuff was all painted two days. Okay. So, wow. And then they usually do color days, which are attachment days. So they, we can do uh, black, yellow, gray, green, and then when we do white days, because they have to clean out the system, they do strictly white. That way, we're not getting an off-white gate. Yeah. <laughs> so that would be hog gates that need to be run through yet. Yep. Wow. Here we thought Doug was looking at a broom <laughs> well, there right there. there. Well, and he's talking about we need this loading dock. Martin's, <laughs> Martin's little brother's back there oh, somewhere. Gotta oh, have Martin. Or at least a relative of Martin. <laughs> so we're moving into the back of the building. This is where square tubing and such gets cut. Square tubing, um, shaft, all gets cut back here. Okay. Um, we can go back and I'll show you guys the racks and stuff, but yeah. Holy cow, that's a that's a bandsaw, I think. They weld them all together so they... Look at this. They weld the stack of individual steel together yeah, and, and then just bandsaw. Bundle pack it, that way you're not... You can do a bunch of them at a time. <laughs> that's, what that's, he's, that's what he's welding over here, is bundle packing. Really? They even have a fancy name for it. Bundle packing. Bundle yeah. <laughs> Bridge crane runs the whole length of this building, so they come in, load it off, and then, depending on what it is, we put them in these racks. <laughs> crane come out, grab what they need, and take them over to the saws, and wait. That's go. sweet. That's almost as good as what we got at home. <laughs> what? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was gonna say. He's gonna make some sparks. Literally welding them together so when they cut, everything is square and true and nothing moves. And they can cut, obviously, a lot more than an individual stick at a time. There you go. He's pretty big, though. <laughs> I could wreck something with that one. Yeah? Well, now we got we got an upgrade, maybe. That's just a broom? Yep. Okay. Now, each welder sweeps up their stall at the end of the day, and. And Wayne will hop on it and he'll up oh, and down yeah. and try and keep it as clean as we can. So this is the actual paint booth? This is where it Counter comes coating. They hung down there yep. and it's just coming out of the oven so it's a little warm. I think it's warmer coming out than it is right now. Yeah, that one's only 50 foot long. This other one's 200 foot long or 150 foot long. And that kind of gets it prepared for the powder to start at heat. At heat. So they, it's all manually sprayed. Yep. It does have the ability to have something set uh, an arm up in there and run, but with the angles and stuff that we have, there's a guy on each side of it, and it just works out better. 
I think I'd like that job. That's bad. That is, that's cool. You know, in the summertime, those guys wear a perforated vest and they have a hose hooked up to them. Well, they do now too, but so when it gets real hot back here, when it, all that stuff's in the oven, that their vests are all puffed up. <laughs> it's blowing constant air into their vest. Huh. So all the paint that's on the floor, is that wasted? That's... We sweep it up and then we, we make these pallets for our buckets that we set outside at an angle. And uh, we, we paint them with the sweep up. Okay. It comes out to a nice brownish color. <laughs> <laughs> so now this would be considered wet? Yep. If you were to wipe your hand on it or whatever, it, it's, it's a nice fine powder. Really? Yep. That's it. Well, you can see how they're getting shinier the farther down they're getting. Yep. Wow. You know, I bet your heat bells a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and yours has a 17 inch screen on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> what are we going to do with that? We're going to push dirt. Oh boy. Silage. Well, we don't push silage. Good. Though. Gravel. Good. All right. How about manure? Hello? <laughs> It's the test! Run! <laughs> the jackrabbits, huh? You had to throw that in. Yeah, well... <laughs> oh, here. Is this are, what you give out for Christmas? Those are actually a uh, fundraising thing we we did. It's their fire pit, fire pit sides. Really? It bolts together and... That's cool. That's yeah. cool. I can't believe how precise that thing is. Like, just flawless edges. Are we ready, boys? I guess so. It's the unheated part now of the video where we load up our new snow pusher. Maybe I should ask if we can back in there. <laughs> <laughs> the reason we came down was, number one, to tour the facility and show that off. It was a really awesome experience. And also to get our 12-foot snow push for the payloader. They'll load it, but they ain't gonna <laughs> strap it. It's absolutely no warmer here than it is at home. Oh uh, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I believe it. Oh yeah, look at that beast. <laughs> She's a big This is the first load for the trailer. Oh perfect. See, that looks brand new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's tall. I'm 6'1", and she's almost got me. <laughs> I'm excited for this. So, can be used on snow? Yep, silage, dirt, manure. Anything? Yeah. Yep. And you'll never bend it? They're, yeah, they're built heavy. What do you think this weighs? Uh, I think you're right around 3,600, something like that. I'd have to look. But... It's a good thing we didn't bring the snowmobile trailer. Yeah, no. That would have <laughs> went right through. Yeah. That is, that is awesome. I'm excited for this. Okay, we're strapped down. We went both ways. Might have to check it once we get rode in a ways. Oh, we're going to go back to the office and warm up a little bit. Yeah, we need to go in the paint booth where it's 450 degrees. That'd be sweet. So we came in to look at this aerial, aerial photo that was painted. Yeah, this is painted by John Green. Um, it's This is a one of a one, but uh, this is my, my grandma and grandpa home, um, Marlon and Wilma. So grandpa was kind of the Start. the pioneer of this place and grandma was right there beside him the whole time. And we had this picture done, I don't know, probably two years ago. And, and uh, I do have a copy of it personally, but this is the actual one that John painted. It turned out phenomenal, so. Oh, that's awesome. Yep. Still 100% family owned business. 100%, you bet. But what year did it start? 1976 is when they moved to Parkston, so. Sweet. You well, bet. that's beautiful. That was really special. I like that painting. Yeah, that's cool. All right, big Kodiak, we're gonna make it home. We got a really bad air leak on our Airbags, I can hear it hissing, the air compressor's running. Dad's just not a fan of this truck. You know what? I, I like it. Since we uh, we tuned it, we gave it 60 more horses. That's, that's very noticeable. All right, long road trip home. Three and a half, four hours, depending how many potty breaks Doug needs and Brody. I'm good. <laughs> Although I do have that feeling. Okay, me too. Maybe navigator, to navigator, we need uh, route home. Take a left. Well, we made it home. It's Monday. 
We're gonna put her on the big unit. See, make sure it fits. And you know, we just bought insurance. Since we bought that, it probably won't snow anymore this winter. Or we can hope maybe. So that's the 12 foot model. We went with that um, because we can push dirt with that bucket. It is rated for dirt. Obviously, it's gonna push a lot harder than dirt, so you don't wanna go stupid, stupid wide. Plus also for fitting it in this building here. Um, I think 12 feet will be a nice size for that unit. Well guys, I think that's gonna be the end of this video. Um, I thank MDS for letting us come tour the plant and pick up our bucket and uh, we've, we're really appreciative of that. That was a really fun experience. Here's its baby brother for the uh, tractor here. Makes that one look really small. But anyways, it was an awesome experience. They're a great group of people. If you ever need any buckets or grapples or snow pushes, look into MDS, highly recommend them. I think that's gonna be a wrap. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.